he was telling me that one of his first jobs before was working at this, I think this fish market mm -hmm. right across, right at Pike's Peak. And I was like, Pike's Place? And I was like, Pike's Place? Isn't that the first place that Starbucks started? He's like, yeah. So there's this place. And, and then what's funny was when a few years ago, I was working at uh, a call center in Cebu. And then they were showing like how basically giving us a whole rundown on how to like how to sell like a, some some sales account that we right. were doing. We we're supposed right. to be selling some marketing uh, products or whatever. Right. Pike's Place is one of those well-known videos for that they show to like sales agents like because mm -hmm. there's like such a there's such a vibe in in that place. It's a buzzing place. It's a buzzing place. And then right. they're basically showing, I guess, uh, would be, you know, uh, sales agents that's, that are just starting um, th th that they were showing that video. Anyway, so Dagan used to work, if I remember his story correctly, that he used to work in one of those uh, fish uh, shops. Fish shop? Is that what you call it? Where you're selling fish? Markets. fish? Fish, fish markets, markets yeah. right across or right in front of 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 the one of the of of the first Starbucks. Oh, that's such cool. A such yeah. a historical place. So he was there from. Oh, well, I, I'm sure he wasn't there from day one because he's too young for that, you know. But he's probably worked there at the very first store. He didn't open it. I'm so mad. I didn't work there opening it. Yeah, but that's still pretty cool being able to do that. Yeah, you to, know, I mean, Seattle to... is where Starbucks started. To be able to experience the whole idea of them right. starting off with one store and then you know growing into another store kind of thing mm. but i think it's worth the mention about dagan and starbucks and um what were we saying and 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 uh got my train of thought what was, what was i talking about starbucks dagan working there the first one i don't know where you were going after that <laughs> Um and seeing it grow, <laughs> gosh, that's like a senior moment right now because I was distracted by Tin trying to set up this TikTok in front of me and the cell phone falling off and right. putting on the wires and everything. I'll I'll try to remember what I was saying, but there was supposed to be something significant. Anyway, right, I right. guess I was trying to segue into the millennial legends. Anyway, ah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, so we had. Uh, Dagan and Alyssa, the Millennial Legends, over for an interview on this past episode, episode 124, this past Sunday. How'd yeah, you feel about you that? It, if you missed it, go back and right, watch check it that. out. It's an, another momentous event. It, oh no, it was it was my way of just sharing that, and because I, I was joking with how Dagan you were addicted that, to oh, it and whatnot. No, 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 I was joking with him how oh that he's been to such a historical place. And then that's kind of ah. where our little conversation about him being so appreciative of history. Like, because so, I was just joking that, you know, he's, you know, been able to experience Starbucks history kind of thing. Right. And it grew into this whole conversation about him basically making an effort to go to these historical places. It, I, I, we kind of skirted around it. It's it, it wasn't really something that we talked deeply about. Mm. in in our interview when they got on our podcast last episode mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's one of those things that i really wanted to emphasize with you at least or with our audience at least right. how these guys dagan and Alyssa, the millennial legends are so appreciative of <laughs> of philippine history philippine american history right right that they made it uh what do you call that when you go to mecca like a, a, a pilgrimage to pilgrimage, to, actually, pilgrimage. To, to make to make sure that they visit the Philippine American History Museum, right, uh, back, right. back at BGC Tagig, the fort. I, I was and, a bit surprised to, to hear that he's pretty much been surrounded by the Filipino culture. Really, you know what I mean? His his friends, his buddies that he hangs out with, his fellow divers, um, co-workers, uh, yeah, and so forth and so forth. You know, so it's not like he went into. Um, just the Philippine culture kind of blind. You know what I mean? What I love about them that it's not all fun and games and like, oh, we're Correct. tourists and we're Americans living here in the Philippines. Like, yes, that's like at the facade. But if you kind of listen deeply into the stuff that they were saying about what right. they plan to do in the future. Right. 
it's I, I don't know how it's going to be, but I think the word is it's 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 more than that. It's going to be it's it's something to look forward to. I'm 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 excited to see how they're going to uh, push forward with what they have in mind. It was a uh, the whole interview itself. I, I, I it was I, I didn't uh, so I listened to it at, at right after. And to be honest with you, I, I liked it. It was a really good interview for me, right? But mm. what gave me affirmation in regards to it is my wife mm. sat down, and because of that interview, she um, definitely started following day de- following uh, Dagan and Alyssa. Mm. She subscribed. And now she's actually watched more episodes than I have. She's been binge watching it. You know, she's like, even watching the live episodes. This screw language, culture, appreciation, and being Filipino and American uh, about the flip side podcast. Let's just right. listen to the millennial legends instead. <laughs> it's not, it, she said that the biggest thing that she said, like, they're just very relatable. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. And and when she said that, it brought back the most the most uh, to me my favorite thing that Dagan said throughout the interview as well. It brought back and when my wife said that, it brought back what Dagan said that go if you're going to the Philippines and you're staying in BGC, you're not going mm. to the Philippines. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Yeah, which makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, it is, but in a way, it's not. You know, you're not really experiencing the Philippines if you're surrounding yourself with just with the BGC, the Manila area. It because it's, it's kind of you know, it's kind of like saying like when you visit, you know, New York or LA or you see Hollywood or Universal Studios, it's like oh, I visited the states. Well, that's right? different. It's different because Is it the, like, I mean, the US has marketed. They have mark the US. The United States has marketed their. Uh, basically new york hollywood san francisco this big these big cities as like the marketable area basically you know what i mean mm, mm. you talk about going to us oh i want to go to times square to new york but if you go to new york city the, the place stinks it's dirty there's a lot of crime it's too crowded it's expensive like hell and mm. you know so it, it 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 is or it's not representing the us i i, I don't think so I don't think so. Um, right. So, if, is it safe to say that yeah, saying BG visiting the Philippines, uh, visiting BGC is like visiting the Philippines is not correct. That's inaccurate. No, I don't think so. I mean, if I'm going to but, say I'm going to visit the Philippines, yeah, of course, BGC would be part of it. Manila but, would be part of it, but you, I don't right. think that's enough to say that I visited the Philippines. Right. But if you, you gotta go get out to, there. Shargao or Bohol, is it like say, is that safe to say like, hey, I visited the Philippines, we, we yes. went to Bohol? Yeah. One, one of the staples of visiting a tourist areas is Bohol. But that's just visiting a province. But yeah, but that's that? where the life is in the Philippines, really. Is it? I, I don't know. I mean, I could be coming from a just a outsider's point of view because of my um, wanting to be there. Do you know what I mean? How about Tondo? I, I think if you visit the Philippines, you know the Philippines. Yeah. Tondo. If you visit Capo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I guess it's it's because I don't know, you know, because Tondo is like to me when you talk about Tondo, streets wise, that's like talking about LA, Inglewood yeah. or Compton. You know what I mean? I guess the better way to say it is like visiting one place is not representative of visiting the whole place. Right. Maybe right. it's not. It's, it, it's, it's not, not like, applicable to every place. You know, you can't say you go into Thailand if you just go to Bangkok. You yeah. Know what I mean? It yeah, depends, I went, really. I went to one province or one like island in Thailand and I definitely did not feel I, I didn't pass Bangkok at all. Mm. So I, I I can't I, I can't really say that and it, on my passport it says you know Thailand but I don't really feel like I visited Thailand Thailand right because it's not really experiencing it now if you go but, the, the flip side of that hold on my train of thought I don't want to lose this the flip side of that is you can't say the exact same thing about America because it's marketed so much that when you talk about oh yeah I went to L A. Everybody that goes to the U.S. as a tourist, really, 
either New York, LA, Miami, San Francisco, right? So mm. yeah, I did go to the U.S. I did go to America,、mm. but you can't have that same relation as talking about Japan or the Philippines. You know I was about I mean? to say Hong Kong. Like if you drop in Hong Kong, visit one night market, I kind of feel like I visited the whole place already. In a way, yes. Or Singapore. Like if I, if I walk down Orchard、yeah. Road, I kind of feel like I visited the whole <laughs> Singapore already. <laughs> it all depends in which place, really, you know. But yeah, I know what you're saying, and yeah, you're right. But you can't say that about the Philippines because the Philippines is not exactly represented by BGC or Manila. You talk about the Philippines, you gotta go to the outskirts. You gotta go to Davao. You gotta go to to、uh, to Baguio, to Bohol. You gotta go to、uh, what's that other、yeah. place? Baracay. Baracay. See. Let me get distracted here real quick. See, Tin was watching a Christine Reyes video a movie a while ago <laughs> on in, in Baguio, and this is、right. part, partly goes back to what we're talking about about really visiting the place and、right. feeling it. So I grew up in Baguio, but longer here in Manila, but but、uh, a good chunk of my life in Baguio.、Mm-hmm. And when I was watching the video, I was watching the movie a while ago. It's like, wow, ang ganda pala sa Baguio. <laughs> <laughs> And, and she was watching it because she also lived there for a good six months. Right. I was like, "Wow, ganto pala sa Baguio. Puto tayo ng Baguio minsan."、Yeah. It's like, <laughs> so like there, like when you watch a movie, you know the location scouts, the movie itself decide that this is the part that we're just going to show. They can't show the whole thing, right? Or they right. can decide to sugarcoat and hide and like purposefully not show. The bad parts, or not the not, the not so cinematic parts.、Mm. So, where are we going with all of that? I don't know. We kind of jumped into the place they're talking, starting from the millennial legends because of what their comment was. <laughs> I think that's what's so nakakaingit about the millennial legends is that they are so willing and open to be going around, as in to really experience it. You know, right, because those are mga foreigners eh, that they, they can actually have... go around. Well, exactly. A lot of the tourists, especially when they go to the Philippines, okay, even、mm. Filipinos who are Balik Mayans、mm. from the U.S. to the Philippines, there is a limit. There, there's kind of like a wall of where they would want to go to or where they wouldn't want to go to. Nagtitipid ba sila? Are they trying no, to save no, money? No, 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 no. I don't think it's about being tipid or being. It, it, it's it's straight bakasyonista. Okay, the tourist and the, some of the Balik Mayans. It's the vacationista attitude, the vacationist attitude. You know, where I don't really want to go here. I want to go here because this is where the spot is. This is a big, good tourist place. Yada yada yada. Do I want to、uh, walk around Tondo, or do I want to go straight to Boho,、uh, to Boracay, or to you know what I mean, Bulacan, whatever?、Yeah. Mm. And the other end,、yeah. oh. people like. Dagan and、uh, Alyssa, the Millennial Legends, or or Commander Daot, or or Kulas Kyle Jenneran with becoming Filipino. Actually, and I'd put Will Dasovich in that、uh, category as well. Their openness. Oh, that's a, such a horrible view. <laughs> Their openness of wanting to actually, literally experience every crevice of the Philippines.、Mm. It, it's impressive, you know. I mean. I gotta admit, I, I I wouldn't find myself even thinking about visiting Tondo and and、uh, Dagan and Alyssa literally were walking around like it's Tuesday. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You know? Yeah, you know, there's such a sentiment about like, and to my fault, not like like oh, I live here, I can go there anytime. But maybe、right. there's this sentiment about them being foreigners, thinking in the back of their minds that they're not going to be living here forever, mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. probably retire here. Right. That there's a sense of urgency that we got to check out these places. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Versus someone that's living here, myself speaking for myself, that I'm probably going to live and die here for. So there's like I can take my time. Yeah, Because they don't have that, or because they're just waiting for the hours here because their、yeah. their visa is going to run out. I don't think it's that. I mean, so that's just my way of saying, like, I I I feel like it's a sense of urgency. Like, I I I feel like it's a sense of urgency. Like, I I I feel like it's a sense of urgency. Like, I I I feel like it's a sense of urgency. Like, I I I feel like it's a sense of urgency. Like, I I I feel like it's a s
such a tourist in my own country, but what I admire from them is that sense of urgency and the go get him attitude that they you know that they project mm. like i remember hearing somebody says like what do you think are you going to be living till 900 years old like of course not so you know we just generally don't have that sense of urgency to i don't to think do it's it, whatever it I, I don't, in, in their particular case with with uh, dagan and Alyssa, i don't think it's it's the source sense of urgency i think it's their their genuine curiosity that and too. I think Tondo maybe appeared in Dagan's uh, view of uh, curiosity because, well, because of the way Tondo is, from what it was to what it is, you know, and the difference of kind of places that he has gone to, walking around BGC and to the memorial, and then all of a sudden you turn around, he's at Tondo. You know, not a lot of people exactly have that kind of aspect or range in regards to their curiosity. I know I don't. Yeah. You know the reason why I think to to admit to myself why I would I I don't explore my own neighborhood so to speak mm. it's probably because I'm going to be so cynical about it it's like Dagan said oh they they like the food and I go there and like don't like the food <laughs> you know <laughs> like, like the the shawarma is so good eh, it's right. okay you know I'm thinking like I'd be so cynical about it but that's is it being cynical, being cynical, or just closed-minded? Huge difference. Maybe to be more honest, parang yung feeling alam mo na. Like yeah. I, I feel like I yeah. already know, but I didn't really go there and try it out. Maybe you should look into follow into their train of thought because, in a way, even though it's there already, maybe it yeah. is a new experience for you, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why. Yeah. That's why it, it's it's both inspiring and frustrating at the same time because frustrating is because like <laughs> ah it's right under my nose why don't I do it? <laughs> it's jealousy. It's jealousy. That's what right. it comes down to. That's right, what it comes right. down to. But like I said, you know, it's it's a nice. Yeah, Dagan and Alyssa, millennial legends. They're like a cup of coffee in the morning when it comes to like Philippine culture. It's a little. <clears throat> it's a bit too much for you. <laughs> kicking the kicking the nuts in a sense like hey these guys are curious why aren't you curious about your own right country? right wake up like, call you know <laughs> so nice view, huh? it's let, let me uh I, I saw one of this uh shorts that i cut up and what i i don't haven't posted yet this yet but um i kind of think it's kind of interesting how you would uh, warn anybody about any westerner like hey yeah, I mean, I'm not necessarily worn about, but like a heads up. If you love beef, there's no beef. There is beef. <laughs> I love how Alyssa was like straight up on that. Like you could tell she's a steak kind of girl, you know, because she's like, God damn it. I miss my beef, man. <laughs> she got to pay premium price for it. That's <laughs> hilarious. There's no beef. <laughs> right. It's a real thing, though. And like. You can find sushi, but it's probably not going to be the best sushi. There's certain things like comforts from home. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I think dairy is probably the biggest one on the food yeah, side because yeah. dairy encompasses no beef, no, no butter, cheese, no, no butter, cheese, no yeah. milk. Was there? Is there something? That's kind of interesting. That, that, that I mean, they they did that. I gotta admit, they didn't hold back, and I'm kind of glad they didn't hold back on any of their answers as well. I mean, it's not like they were hard answers to. I mean, questions to begin with, right? Yeah, well, about the food for sure, but yeah, I felt like we had some questions that I was a bit uh, scared to ask, but at the same time, I figured you know they can handle themselves. But right. yeah, going back right. to the beef and the food that 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 they're looking for, I in a way I I'm not like a you know food connoisseur, and then like I don't even know like the best sushi or anything like that, or even the best beef, right? But Having said that, but I'm that I, I kind of feel the same way about the food that we have. Like they they asked me when we were in um uh what do you call that? The one with the gondola. What do you call that? Venice the, the, Canal. The, yeah, the Venice Canal when we it's like he Dagan asked me, I don't know if he's going to put it in his vlog, but he was like, well, how does it feel to have a 
um, having something like this, like in the Philippines. Mm. And then, you know, there was like Universal Studios came to mind and it, how, it, how it's great that, you know, our engineers are able to come up with something like that. Right. But a lot of, a lot of the food that we have here, I mean, that's, that's my roundabout way of saying that I feel the same way about the food. Now, it's, it's, it's nice to have it here. It's nice to have it available, but it, there's still like something, a little something missing. Right. Parang, right. Like, yes, we do have sushi, but, you know, or yes, we have beef, but it's not. But again, it's like, who cares if it's not the best sushi? Who cares if it's not the best beef? I, I don't think that's her point. It, it, I think her point is it's not as easily accessible because of the, right. well, it's besides no, the no, fact no, that no. it's expensive, the quality no, 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 probably. I, right. No, that's just my, my point. That's right. just my side. I, I feel like it's, it, it's not the best gondola and it's not the best Venice, you know, but yeah, but who cares? Well, that response that she made there and that they both agreed on, it, it shows to tells me how so down to earth and simplified they are. You know what I mean? Because if you ask me that, I'm gonna talk about oh man, they, they, they don't really have like a lot of bug spray options here or whatever, you know. <laughs> it's mm. it's not as frivolous as uh what most people would automatically say. Well, they know how to eat. Well, they 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 know what to look for. Right, right. I mean, it's and, it seems like they're very grounded. And what's so cool about them is that they don't just look for the best restaurant or the best fast food in town. They're looking for right. what's the best street food as in. <laughs> well, I mean, I I know, and it, I gotta admit, I, I I that is my same way of thought. If I go home, because I've been to so many of these restaurants and fast foods fine dining and all that stuff i'm kind of tired of it it's not like i'm kind of tired of it i, wow. I take it back i'm not First tired of it problems. but <laughs> i'm not tired of it i just would prefer going street food for now you know if i was in the philippines you know uh hey, you know you can't have everything all at the same time i don't know i can't right. think of a country that has everything maybe singapore i, mean, I don't know <laughs> i don't know and then being able to like go to like a carinderia, you know, I would love that. I would love to be able to just walk to a carinderia once or twice a day and just chow down, you know? <laughs> yeah. Actually. I mean, the food to me is just, it's good. I mean, yes, of course, fine dining is good, but I'm just saying, I like how they're so grounded as well in regards to that. Um, but they're, relativeness is infectious you know what, what i mean? mean like they project themselves in their videos and well first of all before i even go there you know what you said about how these guys are the guys a machine it's crazy it, it seems like everything just comes so easily for him you know what i mean being on a camera being able to be it seems like he's always on cue don't you think yeah, it's fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you can't it, handle it, uh, a big company with like be responsible for all the the things that everything that everybody's going to eat. Right, right. And, and not be, you know, at the top of your game. So, right. Yeah. But you know, um, I was I was basically about to say uh, before I cut myself off, like how. My wife said that their their relativity, the way they are and the way they project themselves, it's so inviting and it's very uh, infectious. Meaning, mm -hmm. she starts thinking the same train of thought the way they are, their their point of view a little bit, not completely, but in a way where she just related to it so much. Like I said, she binge watched. When did the episode uh, come out? Uh, Sunday. She watched, mm. started watching Sunday night, and she was still watching their shows or episodes yesterday while we were having dinner. You know, mm. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, dude! I mean, how far have you gone into watching our full episodes? She's like, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? And she was like, she she she's really strung on to them, and she's like, I'm, I don't, I'm not surprised. You know, I'm and really not surprised. One of the things co coming off from what you're saying about what your wife watched, 
uh, having had the privilege to see them work, you know, behind the scenes for a few hours, mm. was I really appreciated how they, but they don't overthink it. They just see it and then like, hey, this would be a nice spot to say something. So they just right. turn on the camera and do it. It's not like overproduced and overplanned or what. It's as it's as organic as as organic can be, if that's one way to put it. It's as organic as ground mulch. Yeah, they yeah. just thought about it. Let's do it. Let's rock and roll. You know, like right. uh, it's not such a big production number or what. It's really just about like sharing what it is that they have in mind, and they just roll with it. Well, that this is actually a good segue, um, and, and relatable and I, to that. Sorry, sorry. I I say that yeah, because I have I have been with like production companies that sort of have like not a set script but a whole idea of what the video is going to be like. And, In a way, and, it's and kind I, of like the corporate functionality. Yeah, and then but me, it was like yeah, we have a little. When I when I walked up to them and said, "What did you have in mind for today?" They were like, yeah, "Well, we have a couple of points that we want to go to, but it also it's also up to you and whatever you might want to throw in there." Right. You know, so it's it's they just have an idea that they want to go to BGC or that they want to go to uh, the Philippine American Cemetery or the, the museum that's there. And that's about it. But everything else around that, aside after visiting the place, everything that they'll say, look at, react to is just whatever comes up in front of them. And that's the, that's just what they talk about. Right. Right. It's Here, not here's like overly pre-planned. That's what yeah. I'm saying. He, here's another clip uh, in relation to what we were just mentioning. You were just mentioning here about this is like how he's basically ventured off from the corporate world and all of a sudden to this new world. And he started like, what am I supposed to do now type of thing, you know? Hold on, hold on. Before you do that, uh, can, can I just uh, do you have a millennial word of the day prepared? Because I don't. I do. I do. <laughs> oh, okay. So you want to go to that it. first? No, 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 no. I'll leave that to you for later. Then, okay. Uh, well, you know what? You already brought it up. Word of the day. That's so awkward. <laughs> That's just production, man. Production is just awesome. No, no. ninja moves. Such Today's millennial word of the day. Salty. Salty? Yeah. Like someone that's upset or bitter or jealous. Exactly. About like, why are you being salty, man? You know, the crazy thing is it's been around since like the 80s, but they brought it back. They're bringing it back. They're bringing it back. Millennials are bringing back salty. Yeah. It's... it's it's kind of funny in a way, you know. Why are you being salty? Ew. Yeah, so if I'm <laughs> crapping on the fact that, you know, the millennial legends get to go around the Philippines and I don't, that means I'm being salty? Then you're being salty as hell. I mean, that's just you because you're old and wrinkly. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> millennial word of the day. Let me be honest with you. I chose that word of the day because I wanted to say that phrase to you. <laughs> that, that, what? That I'm being salty? <laughs> you're being salty because you're getting old and wrinkly. <laughs> sorry. sorry. I mean, it's obviously not true because you look young as hell, you know? But it all fit. Right, right. It fit. There we go. Anyway. Got it. I hope you so, got your feel. I hope you <laughs> hope I made your day. Yeah. Go ahead. What now you're, you now you're being salty, dude. Seriously. Ah. <laughs> so this this video or this this clip and that yeah, was yeah, yeah. that was intense. The... very big transition for sure because I went from the top of the corporate ladder in the food and beverage industry to absolute nothing. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do today? Oh, nothing. Mm -hmm. And Crickets. that was Crickets that was for the, for the first six months. What about us, Jason? What's happening to us? We've been doing this for a year already. It's long on the man, then a long on the time. It's a whole okay. Okay, all right. So I, I'm I've been trying to get this through Noel's head. Okay. By the way, stop comparing us to others. Seriously. <laughs>
that was, yeah, a, that was, was such funny. a horrible transition. It was funny, it was but a, you don't have to like bag on us so much. Self-deprecation humor. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a completely different aspect in regards to vlogging and doing a I, podcast. Not complaining. Not complaining. I'm actually I'm I'm enjoying it actually. I don't like the stress. <laughs> I'm just like just show up, done, go back to bed, go home. You know, it's chilling like a are you playing the video to make me feel bad? I mean, I, I no. Sorry, wait. It, it was actually just play part of and, the video, unfortunately. Am I actually able to play like and pause the video? Well, you, you just end? did. You wow. just did. Right. Right. I so, I actually like the podcast stuff. Yeah. I, when we do our lives, we're getting better at it, and it's pretty smooth. Okay, I'm gonna cut that off. I should have cut it off earlier because uh, I don't want to like. Obviously, they're they're probably gonna do something, you know, but. Yeah, um, him coming from a major corporate world and whatnot, an industry where the stress is insane, the time that you spend in it and you put on it is uh, ridiculous, to basically one day waking up and like, so what do you want to do? That's not well, an easy thing to do, you know? It's, it's a not. saying that winners are going to be winners, you know, whether you put them in a high-end corporate arena or if you make them vlog on youtube you know if they are go-getters they're go-getters no matter where you put them on yeah well the amount of time that you put into something definitely reflects in your results so yeah uh, i mean obviously they're just they're they're a machine it's insane you know I, I saw that raw footage and the raw video that you sent me that two hour long video i kid you mm. not when i said that i watched the entire thing from the beginning to mm. the end you know Oh, really? Watch it all, well, because that's what I do. You know, mm. the, the curiosity have, uh, lingers <laughs> and whatnot. And watching them, watching them just, or watching him, just, you know, it's like his his brain when when he's in the zone. It's like a rolling camera film that just keeps on going and going and going. You know, mm. he's always on cue. So, um. Anyway, it, it was a, it was an awesome interview. I loved it. Um, I'm glad that people enjoyed it as well. Um, and because of that, we've actually um, learned about the industry that we're doing to, at least I did as well. And it's uh, definitely affected us in a good way. So I can't wait to have them back and, uh, see, and watch what they're up to next. I don't want to toot our own horn here, but I really feel proud or honored privileged that you know they took a chance at us or that anybody mm. would take a chance at us to do because they could have been doing something else you know they could have been cooking adobo or whatever right <laughs> that that was time for that was dinner time for them or another, another <laughs> yeah yeah i got, you, I got or you. they could have oh. gone out to the bar or whatever but they decided like hey there's an invite to do a podcast why not yeah they yeah. could have said no or they could have done done it elsewhere or somewhere else but and then, and then at the same time, you know, I got to pat you on the back for being able to get in touch with them and say, hey, let's do this. Well, so that, it, it's, um, yeah, you know what? I will pat myself on the back. Um, the, the, it doesn't take long to really reach out to anybody, but I don't want to just reach out to just to anybody. You know what I mean? I need to yeah. have genuine interest to what's going on with these people before yeah. I reach out to them, you know. So that's what I want to ask you: Were yeah. you able to feed that curiosity when you finally got to talk to them? Absolutely, them? absolutely. I Dagan was exactly the same way I had imagined or I had pictured. With 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 full transparency, I I, I got curious with them because, well, I got sucked into the way he just bring things up. You know, his personality and his his expressions are kind of similar to mine. So in a way, yeah, it mm. definitely um, lived up to its potential. And I can't, like I said, I can't wait to have them back. I'm excited, you know. Also, you know, by the way, real quick, mm. um, Commander D is most likely going to be joining us again in mid-March. You know, just is that tech, something uh, you can announce already? Are you sure? Yeah. Well, Come on, man. I, I, I mean, Commander D's buddy. Is, once, a t 
<laughs> Once the toothpaste is out of the tube, right? You can't like pull it back in. Right, right, right. You got to squeeze it all out. <laughs> you gotta... <laughs> but yeah, that's that rolls back around to what we're doing here. Parang it's um, you know, after a year of doing a podcast with Tin doing the cooking on the side and that kind of thing. Mm. Parang it's easy to think or andaling isipin na parang baliwala lang like oh we're just doing a podcast it's like three people that are listening who cares or right. like parang ganun or magluluto to kahit tuyo lang or tinapa like tuyo pasensya na tuyo lang or tinapa lang maluluto ngayon it's like yeah but it's still something you know Absolutely. like you can't you can't um underestimate by the word or you, you can't undervalue undermine, undervalue, undervalue what we're able to or ca- are capable of being able to do right. as simple as it is that we're doing what it is that we're doing. And then right. to the effect that some people actually recognize or respect what we're doing enough or, to take their chances to be on our platform. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. Wow. Well said, man. It's the coffee. How many it's cups the today? Four? Just one. <laughs> oh, just, just, oh, my just God. So far. Just one so far, and you're talking about being addicted. Never mind, you know. <laughs>